All right, hello. I'm going to show you how to calibrate your ESCs with Python. And this can be done with any uh, simple programming language. Um, it takes a little um, calibrating and hacking. Um, you know, what I see online is that everyone uses their little radio transmitter to calibrate the ESCs every time they take off. But that's, come on, we can, we, we live in 2014. This is, this is 2014 and you're still using uh, a radio transmitter to calibrate an ESC. Come on. Okay. So what I what I researched is that um, these ESCs they work on pulse width modulation. So it's a very familiar a familiar concept to me. Um, but to someone who might not know what pulse width modulation is, it's just you know you can control the duty cycle of a wave. Of um, yeah, I think you know what wave is. So, what a duty cycle is, is the amount of time that a signal stays high in its period. So, what you're, what you're probably used to seeing is, um, say, a sine, no, a sine wave, or whatever, a square wave, of course. Okay, so a square wave, um, say, you've probably seen a square wave before. So the typical square wave you see is a 50% up, 50% down square wave. So it's basically half and half. Now, let me tell you that you can edit that width of the high, the high part, to anything you want, and that's pulse width modulation. So let's say uh, a really low pull, a, a really low percentage duty cycle would be like a, a high part and then a low, like a really long low uh, for that period. Um, and a really high percentage duty cycle would be just like, you know, 100% would be just DC high. You wouldn't have a square wave anymore. Um, so he, I wrote a little program here. It took me like 10, 5 minutes, 5 hours, 10 days to write this. Um, and say, you know, it's a simple like, take in your, put in the value, wait for the user to input a number, uh, spit it out, put it, set the duty cycle, and if you put something else in, it breaks the loop and then it just stops. Um, it's really nice that the BeagleBone came with this whole Adafruit uh, libraries that I can use with it. Um, it really makes it a lot easier and you know I can just type in some functions and methods and the methods are already pre-built in. I don't even have to type the methods myself. It's really nice. Um, so this method start calls the header uh, p header 18 I mean p header 8 13 I always make that mistake uh, this 10 means the starting duty cycle 10 I'm starting at 10 percent because you know I did some research on these turning e motors turning e ESCs and the to calibrate them you need to set it at high first the thing will play its music then then you set the low and that's calibration you calibrate the range and that's for default flying so um, the duty cycles you have to throw at this thing is first you throw the max which is 10% duty cycle you know, I thought it was going to be like 90 or something but no it's it's 10% duty cycle of a 50 Hertz wave so you know it's general most efficient um, wave you're gonna throw at this um, thing it's gonna be 50 Hertz and lowest duty cycle you want to set is 4 that's going to be your 0 4% duty cycle of 20 milliseconds uh, 50 Hertz wave is going to be you know um, how many microseconds like 800 microseconds but you know it's really simple you know throw put in the numbers and it spits it out all right so now let me um, secure shell into my putty I mean secure shell into my beagle bone I already have a session saved here now it's really nice about the beagle bone is that I can use this as a Linux operating system. It comes everything that Linux does, which is really nice. I can uh, log in as root, not rot, and don't look at my password. So here we go. We're now in the BeagleBone itself, and just to prove to you that this is Linux, I can type in uname a, and look at that. Linux BeagleBone 3.8.13. I'm currently running Angstrom on this computer, on this BeagleBone right now. And of course, it comes with every Linux thing that a, a Linux would, <laughs> would come with. Um, comes with, you know, 
all the basic commands comes mk direct make directory you can move stuff you can um, especially no you can't sudo in this no 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 that's that's ubuntu but you can but what, what you can do in this is open package install uh, that's the only thing i see different i only used ubuntu before but it's it's not really a steep learning curve you know you can pick this up real quick all right so now the other thing i really like about this cloud 9 id that i'm using right now is that these folders right here are connected directly to the beagle bone so now I don't, I don't even have to like ftp or scp or tcip into the board any of that fancy stuff i don't even have to, to do that i mean if if i did it would be pretty impressive but uh, you know, I just always go for the easiest route, you know, write the program in your browser, save it, and you can access it here. So cd slash var slash lib slash cloud9 and to ls. Yes, we're in here right now. These four, four files are, yes, these guys. Uh, so what we're looking right now is for py demo and pwm.py. Okay, so we got that py demo quad don't look at this it's very top secret so now let's go into cd py demo and let's ls into here all right so these two files right here those are these two files wow wow they're right there okay so um i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my oscilloscope right now let me just pre-type some pre-type the command that i need to run the python file so I'm going to turn on my um, thing right now. Now what you should be seeing right now is picture in picture, if I got the editing right. Drink my water. All right, so I'm using a DS1000E. It's a pretty cheap oscilloscope, but this is not an oscilloscope um, review video for Amazon. I don't work for Amazon, but it's a pretty nice oscilloscope. So now. What I already preset on this oscilloscope is those two um, blue values at the bottom are the frequency and the width of a wave. So you can properly see what frequency this wave I'm throwing at this machine will be and what width I'm starting out at. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this program will start out at a 10% duty cycle. So let me press enter. Okay, so now it's prompting me for an input, but yeah, I'm seeing, yes, the oscilloscope's right next to me. I'm seeing a, what's that say? Two milliseconds of a width on that, um, on that, uh, width, on that wave. And what's the frequency on that? Yeah, 50, 50 hertz. If you can see on that picture in picture, it is 50 hertz, which is really nice. I, I like, I like seeing things work. So let's go to a 50% duty cycle. And this is probably what you're probably used to seeing as a normal square wave, is that it's 50 high and 50 low. So um, it's pretty nice. Now we're gonna set it to the to the highest that I set this at 99, um, and it looks like a pretty normal uh, DC uh, DC high. I mean, with <laughs> just one millisecond of a drop there. Um, now I'm gonna set this down to the lowest I can go for. Um, so what I got there on the width, it says one millisecond, but I know it. I know it that it's 800 microseconds, according to the math. But it's low enough, you know, um, as a what's it called as a low. All right. So I'm glad that this works. And let me just enter anything besides that, and uh, the actual exits too. So next, I'm going to show you how to hook this all up to the to the ESCs and see if it works. All right, hi, welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and um, hook this guy up to this uh, to this motor and see if we can calibrate it from the beagle bone. Now, I would, if I were to tell you that this is my first time, this is not my first time doing this. I tried this before with the program, didn't work, and I did a lot of research um, on why it wasn't working. Now I'll tell you along in the process. So let me show you the process of hooking this up and I'll explain to you why that I that I suck at this. So let's hook this up like this. Just these first three pins, you know. I mean that's simple enough. Like even I even I knew how to do that. So let's do this. Do that. 
that. Okay. So this uh, little receiver pin, right? You would normally connect it to your your radio receiver, but who needs that? We got my beagle bone over here. Um, this red wire coming out of the beagle bone is that pulse width modulated signal, and this white wire is the ground that I have. So let's look at the colors on here. The the red is that positive five volts co coming out of that battery eliminator circuit. Um, the white one here is where you're going to be putting your signal, and that black is your common ground, you know, for your whole thing. So I'm going to hook up ground to ground, right here. Okay. And I'm going to hook up uh, that pulse width modulation wire to to white to the white on this. So red, so the beagle bone red to white on the turnagee, and the ground to ground. So, here we go. We got this guy set up. Now let's hook him up to the battery. So first I'm going to connect, um, what's it called? Negative to negative, because that's, first I'm going to connect, actually, more safely, I'm going to connect the more exposed end in first, because I don't want to get electrocuted. So I'm going to do this, and I don't want shorts either. Alright, so now let me tell you why this didn't work. 10% duty cycle too high it simply didn't um, take it so normally these motors I th what I think is that they take um, duty cycle inclusively so that means they exclude um, they don't take in values exactly at that high value so what I did was that I set this when I start this I set it at 9% duty cycle alright so let me run the program right now right now it's it starts at 10 so let me just type in 9 and it'll start at 9 duty, duty set to 9 is what it says on the, on the computer right now okay so now let's hook this guy up to power let's see what happens Doo -doo -doo. okay so that's the music so that means the um, that means it's taking in that high throttle so this is currently at 9, it's the highest it will be, right? So according to this this really unhelpful manual, completely bogus, can't even read it. Now I'm going to set it to 4, the lowest one. Let's see what happens. So that, that means it's set at 4, which is the lowest percentage duty cycle, which means uh, now it's going through the menu of the whole, of the whole thing it does. All right, so now I'm going to disconnect it from power, um, if I remember where the thing was. Okay, so now it's disconnected. Now make sure your thing is at um, bottom throttle, so 4. Right now it's outputting 4, so I'm going to connect it back up. Do -do -do. Okay, so that means it's taking in everything. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw numbers at it now. I'm going to throw it at 5. So now it's gone. See, it's gone um, five. So that means it's like the lower bound of speed. So let me take this guy up, just up the scale. We go to six. It's going a little, a little bit faster. I'm gonna go to seven. It's going a little faster, more faster. I'm gonna go to go to eight. And nine should be the last one, last speed. So I have a total of five speeds to go at, and it does a pretty good job of like of switching speeds. I'm switching back down to four. Didn't take it. So I switched back down to five. Remember that it's inclusively, I guess. So I'm gonna turn off the program right now, and it turns off, which is pretty nice. Um, great. Um, did it with Python. Simple duty cycle editor. You know, don't have to use a uh whatever you know great job